Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to pop onto my Facebook page and make sure that our current live is pinned to the top. So just bear with me a minute. Is it on there yet? There it is. Pin to top. Okay. So I try to pin our Facebook to the top of the page every time we have one. Let me turn this off so I don't have to listen to myself talk. I am watching myself. <laughs> okay, for comments later. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully there will be some people joining me. We're going to be um, working with some liquid masking. If you see them, they look blue. Hi, Patricia. So I have... Um, couple tips today. This is the first time I've used this. I've had it for a while, but I've never used it. So we're going to find this out together. Hi, Tisha. Thanks for joining. So this is called drawing gum. And this is different from what we used the other day, which was masking paper. So the masking paper does have a split in the back. If you can see that, it, it has um an, a peel away back on it. And what you can do with this is you can stamp, fussy cut, peel the back off, and then use it to mask. And I will show you an example. We did this the other day. So I still have my little masking papers in here that we colored on. Hi, Judy. Thank you for joining. So there's many ways you can do this. Um, one other thing I want to tell you specifically, and I'm going to do this differently when I do the example so I can show you another video. So I'll prep for a second video. This, it is very important that it is dry before you color on it. Um, probably not as specific with using um, sponges, which is what we're gonna do today, but you do have to make sure this is dry. So I did paint these ahead of time. Hopefully it's enough ahead of time that they dried. I did slightly hit them with my heat tool, so we'll see. Hi, Donna. Hi, Stephanie, Yvonne, good morning. So when I do my next one, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stamp it onto watercolor paper because this is intended to mask for a watercolor medium or what was the other thing it said? Probably should have brought my glasses or airbrushing, which I don't have an airbrushing machine, but if you have an airbrushing machine, you could use this too. So thank you all for joining me today. So just a few things. Um, we are in celebration. Good morning, Diana. So every purchase you make that is $50 or more, you do earn something free. It does have to be before tax. So for $50, there are some, um, great stamp sets. I should have some of these handy, but I don't. Great stamp sets. There is paper. There is a, an embellishment pack with embellishment and ribbon. Um, if you move to the next tier, which is $100 tier, there is an embossing folder and stamp set combo. There are dies that go with the lily. So you can get this whole lily set if you had a big enough order or if you order multiple times for free because there's a stamp set, there's paper, and there's dies. So I have thus far the paper and the stamps, but I'm going to probably get the dies because I did like them after all. So good morning from Wisconsin. Hi, Marlene, Fran. Um, aside from that, there's not really a whole lot of new stuff going on at the moment. Um, Paper Pumpkin is open for sign up for the January to February Paper Pumpkin. It is a card kit. I do know that for sure. But, and it's got some beautiful coordinating colors. So without further delay, I'm going to flip you guys around. Let's see if I can move a couple of these things out of the way. And I have been working on some really simple DSP cards. So those of you, hopefully everyone got their paper share by now that did participate in the paper share. So I have some cards that will be really simple to make that you could make using the DSP. And then maybe that will encourage you if you'd really like one of them to go ahead and buy something different because there's lots of great papers. Um, tomorrow I am part of a blog hop with the Stampin' Friends and we've had a little revamp. So we actually have 15 people in the blog hop tomorrow. So that's really exciting. So you can go to reachthestamper.com to get started. And I think that's it for now. There was something else I wanted to say and I just totally slipped my mind, but maybe I'll think of whatever it is that I wanted to tell you. Hi, Rhonda. Thank you for joining. Nice to see your face. All right. So I'm going to flip you guys around 
and if anybody gets motion sickness, there's the rainbow stamper. It is time to avert your eyes. Whoops. Sorry, I did that again the other day. That must be the button I'm pushing. Oh, you're welcome, Marlene. Well, that's part of what I do with the labeling. That way, if you'd like to order them again, and we are all settled on the screen, you're awake. If you'd like to order them again, hey, Amy, there are uh, the numbers on there, the price, the color it coordinates with, and I will be sending out a follow-up survey. That's what I was going to do. There will be a follow-up survey, so anyone that participated in the ribbon share or the paper share, or one person did both, you will get a survey. And I basically just want to ask you what you thought about the share. And I do have one ribbon share left because one, um, I had an issue with payment. So if you would like it, there is one ribbon share, first come, first serve. So I don't remember what the cost is, but send me an email at reachthestamper at gmail.com and we'll get that situated. Let me move this stuff out of the way. So what I did, I kind of went with the same theme from the other day when we did our little meerkat card. Let me just slide these comments over here so I can watch them lower. We did this one the other day and this one we used the masking paper. So if you guys recall, if you missed it, this was on um, YouTube. So we actually masked these and then we peeled them off and then we colored these in with the Stampin' Blends. So there is another way that you can do it and it's called drawing gum. Now this is a little bit more so for if you were masking something to use um, and watercoloring. So I'm going to prep this one as, I, as if I were going to do it like this, but I'm actually going to make another video out of this in watercolor. So basically it's this blue fluid. You do have to do a few things to prep for this. So I'm going to close this up just for a second so I can show you. I have a couple things you have to do to prep. Um, you could use this in a little tiny, maybe if you have a, a teacup or a shot glass or something. I actually did it earlier in this mason jar and it was a little too deep. So I'm going to just use the lid for now. But what I did was I did a couple of images and these are going to just have a little bit extra time to dry. So I did the meerkats and I painted them over. If you can see they're shiny. They're, I think they're still, I can't tell if they're tacky or if that's just kind of the way that stuff is. So I'm not really sure because I haven't used it. Bought it a while ago and never used it. I also did the turtle. And then since I had this done from the other day, I figured I might as well do something with it. So this is the kangaroo. So we'll try and do these backgrounds. Now, I did these on Whisper White. If you were to try to do this with more than a sponge or a dauber, you're going to want to use either thick Whisper White, shimmery white, or even watercolor paper because this is... Is this Whisper White does not take a lot of water. So you have to use something that is not going to be soaking the paper. So I'm going to do these three that I've done already. I'm going to do these three with a mix of sponges and sponge dauber. But I'm going to prep this one that I'm going to show you now for if you were to do it with um, a paintbrush and watercolor, but using our ink. So using these inks, however, using a wetter brush. So I'm just going to show you what we're going to do. So I have a piece of um, kind of dirty watercolor, or, yeah, watercolor paper. Now this is not Stampin' Up's watercolor paper. I do want to say that from the get-go because to me, Stampin' Up's watercolor paper is just a little bit too bumpy on both sides. So this one, this is Strathmore. It has a smoother side and then it has a bumpier side. So you can use either one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just another piece and cut it down. I've already did something on that one. Now you don't have to use this. You can use Stampin' Ups if that's what you prefer. Maybe you have a different watercolor paper that you like. Um, I did try several other watercolor papers and I find that this one holds up the best personally. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, you're wondering why I had a blue turtle. That's funny. It holds up the best in my opinion. And I like the way the water moves on it. So I'm going to just trim this down. I'm just going to trim another piece that's going to be like three by four. And that way I'll stamp a couple different things. I'm going to stamp them on... Oh, that's a little smaller, but that's okay. I'm going to stamp one on each side. So one of them I'm going to do on the bumpy side of this paper. And one of them I'm going to do on the smooth side. That's why I wanted to cut a second piece. 
but you can absolutely use uh, Stampin' Up's watercolor paper. Now, Stampin' Up's older watercolor paper is different than the current watercolor paper. So the new paper they have is a Fluid 100, and it both sides of it are very, very textured, as you can see. It does really work nicely if you want to emboss on it and then kind of fill in the water afterwards. It looks really pretty, but it's definitely a little bit different to use. And I don't know if this is hot or cold pressed. I'm not quite sure how this is made. So that also does have an effect on how the paper is usable. So what I thought I would do today is to get out, and I, I'm going to do two, and I'm just going to prep two, but I'm not going to finish these now. I'm going to show you how to set them up. So this stamp set is really fun. Do the impossible. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. Actually, Walt Disney said this, and the reason I know is because when we were at, um, when we were in Walt Disney World most recently, not the cruise, but before that, this was written on the wall when they were doing one of their construction. So I thought that was really nice. So that was one of the reasons that I wanted to get this stamp set. So we're going to stamp, um, we'll do something with the, we have, I, I'm a swimmer. I really don't like to run. If you know me at all, you know, I do not like to run, but I do like to ride my bike. <laughs> so we're going to do something with these guys but I'm going to put them in the Stamparatus. And the main reason I'm going to do them in the Stamparatus is because this is watercolor paper. And sometimes it requires a little bit extra inking to get the images to work out nicely. So I'm just going to pull out my Stamparatus. So this will just be another little refresher with that. So with your Stamparatus, you get two plates. I was having some trouble the other day remembering plates. Don't ask me why. That seems kind of silly but I guess my brain was asleep so it comes with two different plates so you can put things on both sides um, you don't want to fold them both down together because it will bend it so typically I will fold one down and slide the other one nested underneath when you are stamping with a rubber stamp you do want to take out that black mat so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lay both of these down and I'm going to show you basically how I would prep this and this one looks like the smooth side, so we'll do that one first. So we'll just do the runners for the first one. And when you're doing water coloring, now here's the here's the thing. When you're doing water coloring, you want to make sure that you use an ink that is not going to be water soluble. So you want to use stays on. So we're going to use stays on for this. For this first one. Oops. <laughs> Didn't take the little plastic off. I was wondering why there's no ink on them. I was going to say, wow, my stays on is really dry. So we're going to press this in. And we're going to just open it up. That was pretty quick. It, it could be a little darker, so I'm just going to re-ink it again. One thing you could also do if you had the time and you were doing this ahead of time is you could actually watercolor it, um, do the paper or do the masking fluid and then you could always go back and re-ink it again if you wanted it darker all right so that's going to be oh her hand is just a little bit let me just make sure i get the hands because the inside of the hands were a little bit not so dark let me just do one more time on their hands all right so that's going to be one. Oh, i think i moved it just a little bit on that one that's okay we're gonna we're gonna do it anyway and then for the second one I'm going to go to the bumpy side. So that was me doing the smooth side. This one I'm going to do the bumpy side. And I'm going to see if I can kind of lay it out how they have their um, card laid out here. So as you can see, this little one with the bike, run, and swim triathlete. So let me just clean my... Oh, it's over there. Let me clean this stamp off. And then we're going to kind of design how we have it laid out. And then we'll stamp it now stays on does stain so those stamps are going to be black which is fine it does not affect their use whatsoever but I'm going to see if I can kind of see it's going to be a partial with the biking let's see we can get this all in here like that and don't really want to cut off their heads, but I think that's going to be all we're going to get in for the bikers. Just a little bit. So I'm just going to pick these up. 
So same thing again, just picking up these stamps. Once again, I'm going to ink them up. Oh, don't worry, Wanda, you didn't miss anything yet. I'm still in the prepping stages, so. And if you did, remember, it always is back for replay. Okay, so I'm just going to ink these up once again. That's with stays on. And stamp. <clears throat> you can see that's pretty light. Now, this is really light because, once again, now we're on the bumpy side. So that's why you want to make sure... It's really nice to use a Stamparatus or another stamp positioning tool if you have one because it really helps to get into those deep grooves, specifically the deep grooves that are on watercolor paper. If you're on Thick Whisper White, you're not going to have this problem, but you're going to need to limit your watercoloring a little bit. If you're on... Um, move this over just a little. I just want to make sure it doesn't move. If you're on... Regular Whisper White, you're definitely not going to have this problem, but you don't really want to be watercoloring on it. And if you're on Shimmery White, kind of same thing. It's not quite as thick, but it will hold up to a little bit for the watercoloring. All right, I think I must have moved this just a teeny bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it because I don't want to be annoying. And we're going to also pretend that they are running so fast that it's just slightly blur blurring because I wasn't, didn't have it secured so much this morning. So I'm just wiping these off and I'm going to take this, move it out of the way, just wipe off my Stamparatus. Now I will tell you one thing. There is a teeny little bit of ink that's on this Stamparatus here, which really is not that big of a deal. So we do also, let me see if I can reach it without having a catastrophe. They do also carry um, stays on cleaner. So you can use this for your stamps. Probably can use it for your Stamparatus. So I'm just gonna spray, just for the effect of not making a mess. I'm gonna spray a little bit on here. And it just wiped that right off of there so it is clean and then the same thing you can do with your stamps you can either spray your stamps directly or you can spray a towel spraying them directly isn't going to hurt them but it does really help to get the ink off however it's not going to ruin your stamp by having stays on on it doesn't affect it other thing you could probably do and i haven't tried it with this before but while we're at it is you could try your stamp cleaning pad let's see So there's that. And then usually what I do is I'll go back with my chamois and kind of wipe the excess goop off. Actually, those cleaned up super nice. And then I'll go in with my microfiber towel and kind of get the rest of the drips. And then since this was, when I inked this up, it was down, I'm just going to take it, flip it over, and press it just to clean it. But Again, it's not going to affect anything with your stamp, so you don't have to worry about the fact that you've ruined it, because you didn't. All right, so there's that. So now we're going to get on to part two. So stays on typically does dry really fast, so that's why I'm not as worried about this portion of it. But otherwise, if you were using black ink, you want to make sure your ink is dry before you move on to the second step, okay? So step number two, you want to have a paintbrush that's not your favorite because you don't want to use a brand new one. It can be a little bit rough on the bristles. I have put a little bit of um, dish detergent onto this paper towel. So what I'm doing is just rolling my brush and a little bit of the dish detergent. And what it does is it protects the bristles and makes them to be a little bit easier to clean because this stuff can stick to your bristles, okay? So this is called drawing gum. I'm sure there's probably plenty other places that make this. This was just one that I think I saw either uh, Jennifer McGuire or Christina Werner use. So you do want to shake it up. You do want to make sure you protect your work surface because it can be a little splattery. You could use, like I said, if you use a glass jar, I would use a short one. This one was too big, which is why I'm not going to use it again. So I'm going to just use the lid, and then you're just going to open it up. You could pour a little bit of it out into like a little mini shot glass or a little demi tasse cup if you have something that you use in your art room or craft room or whatever. So I am for right now going to just dip out of the lid. So since I coated this with um, 
dish detergent is going to make it a little bit easier to clean, which is the goal. So you're just dipping this in until it's just a light blue. And then you're just going to basically cover over the area that you don't want to have the color peek into, whatever it is. You may be either watercoloring or um, using your ink colors on. So kind of get the whole thing. If you're worried about his hair staying black, make sure you go over it because it could, you know, if you're using a color that goes over it that's a light brown, it could show up, but then he would just have some cool brown highlights. So I'm just going over all the spots. I am not covering up in the arm gap areas, so that's kind of a nice thing because we did have to um, go back and fill that in when we did our cutting with the fussy cutting that we did the other day on the meerkats because we didn't do quite that amazing of a job of fussy cutting. I should say we. That wasn't we. That was just me. I wasn't fussy cutting because I didn't pre-fussy cut. <laughs> so I'm just every once in a while kind of going and you don't want it to be thick. You uh, you can really stretch this out. You don't. It doesn't need to be thick. It just needs to cover. And the longer or the thicker it is, I should say, it does take longer to dry. So I would set this aside. Right now it is wet. It's got a little bit of bubbling on there. I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of that off his arm. But it will, it will dry. So I'm going to set this one over here. And then we'll go in and do the next one. I don't have quite as much in the bottom. So I'm just going to dip out of the... So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Missed a little teeny bit of his arm here, but like I said, we were going for, he was going for speed this morning. That's why they're so blurry. I probably could have anchored them down a little better. So when you decide to do yours in your Stamparatus, just make sure you anchor them down nicely. But the cool part about this is you'll be able to do all different things. You could just do a wash like they did on their card. Or you could color it in with like a little bit of grass ground and then the water over here. So just whatever it is you want to want to make it. And then what I will do is I will go back after the fact and especially because I didn't do their hair quite as dark. I'm going to go up into their hair. And that way we can always fill it in if we wanted to. But I will go back after the fact for this and I will do these as a quick video where I'm not showing you how to do it. I'll just go back and redo them and make a video and pop that onto um, YouTube. So stay tuned for that. I do need to wait for them to dry so it probably won't go on most likely until Friday. I also knew I had to get this stamp set aside from the uh, Walt Disney thing when I saw the swimmer because I am not very athletic. Let me just wipe this off a little bit. I am not athletically inclined. However, I um, was a competitive swimmer when I was growing up, which may shock some people, but it's true. True story. I My best... Um, meet. I won third place overall at the Naval Academy, one of our meets in, I think it was breaststroke, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool to be able to swim at the Naval Academy too. Now the bicycles, you don't really have to color them in as much because, you know, they are kind of see-through. So you can color in maybe like the, the shaft of the bike. Make sure you get his leg and his arm. And if there's something that you're missing, you can kind of always look back at your stamp to see what you think would be colored and what won't be. All right, so I'm going to just leave it right at that. That's pretty good. Okay, so then afterwards, whoops. So you do want to make sure when you close this that you close it very securely so it doesn't dry out. You want to take your brush... And I'm not going to do mine. That's kind of why I kept this over here. I'm going to take your brush and you want to rinse it out at the sink. That way you make sure you really clean the bristles. It'll get that soap off as well. 
And then the next time you do it, just same thing again. You're going to re-dip your brush into the soapy kind of, it doesn't really, it could be soapy water. It could be just like a little drip of, of dish soap, but you want to coat it because it makes it a little bit easier to clean. Okay. So there is that part. I'm going to put both of these up somewhere high so they don't get ruined. All right. And now we're going to move on to this part. So again, I said I was going to do these with, um, Ooh, sponges. So I got down all my sponges. So I figured we'll do pick, just grab a couple sponges because I don't know what colors we're going to do. We could even grab a couple sponge daubers, but as I told you before, those do have a little bit more of a concentrated color. So if you're using a sponge dauber, just always know it's definitely going to be a little bit darker. So we will start with the meerkats again. So what I'm going to do is just kind of pick out what I think I'm going to do for ground. So we'll do a little bit of a combination between um, crumb cake and soft suede. And I know the meerkats themselves are a brown, I think someone told me, with a little bit of a black striping. So mine are going to be creatively licensed. They probably might not look exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and grab early espresso as well. So those. And then I'm going to do something for the background. I'm going to do... We'll do something like a little bit lighter for the background. So maybe like a little bit more of a sunset. We'll do a little orange. So mango, a little pumpkin, a bright yellow. We'll do some pineapple punch and maybe still a little bit of blue. I'm going to go with seaside spray. So we'll do this. So we're going to see how this works out. Hopefully it turns out as good as I have it in my mind. I am going to grab, just because this is going to be messy, I'm going to grab a little piece of scrap paper for under here. And we're going to start with the lightest color. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Hi, everyone who joined late. <laughs> you think I'm athletic. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I like to think so, too. Even if I'm not, maybe anymore. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of um, the color from Crumb Cake and kind of brush it on the edge. And this one I'm kind of going straight across with. And what I might do, you know what, I'm going to grab this just for the heck of it because I do like to use this sometime. I'm going to get a little bit of glycerin and put on here just in case I'd like to be able to spread it a little bit smoother. Um, the glycerin really does help to, to even out your color. So even if you just dip into it a little bit when you do it, it really helps to spread the color out a little bit nicer. Now, since I am going from light to darker, I'm going to be lazy and use the same sponge, but you can use different ones for each one. So this is soft suede. I'm just going to get a little bit of that. Kind of add in a little bit of maybe like if I were to say where a dirt mound would be. And I'm trying not to go up too high. So there is going to be a, there's a little ground behind them, but I'm just trying not to get too, too high on it. And then same, I'm going to go in with early espresso. Kind of keep this at the corners. So just like that. All right, now, so that was the three for those. Now we're going to do our lighter colors. So I'm going to go in with, I'm going to do blue in a really, um, I'm going to do it with a dauber. So it's kind of concentrated a little bit in a certain area. And then I'm going to go back with the other color. So hopefully this turns out the way I want it to. All right, I'm going to do just a teeny bit of glycerin. Kind of just want just a really, really light, like a haze through the sky. All right, so that's, it's not a lot. It kind of almost looks like I smudged it, if you could see it. But, so there's that. And then for the rest, I'm going to go in. I'm going to start with the yellow. So let me put this over here so I remember what these were for. I'm just going to use a sponge for the pineapple punch. I'm trying to also keep the colors a little bit away so the green or the blue and the yellow away so they don't end up becoming green. Now I'm going to go on to mango, get a little bit.
bit of this because mango can be a little overpowering. Kind of like a hot deserty area. Almost looks like a little bit of a cloud. So we'll see. And then for the final, I'm going to try some pumpkin. Kind of going to try to keep this a little bit to the side. More so like it's framing the picture. Almost the way that little blue kept in there kind of looks like the sun, like the beating of the sun. All right, so there's one. So I'm going to leave this. We're going to set this to the side. Give it the rest of my extra stuff out of the way. So we'll go that for him. And since I have it out already, I'm going to go ahead in again with the turtle. And I'm going to do seaside spray. And then we'll do a green ground for him. So I'm going to wipe this off because this has some mango in it. And if I pick up that glycerin now, it's going to color the blue and then it's going to make a crazy color. So I'm just wipe that off. Nice, nice other reason to use your blocks. You can use them for um, mixing. As a matter of fact, Donna and uh, some of the other Ohio ladies were watching Frenchie yesterday and they were talking about these skinny blocks that come with the paper pumpkin. So they're really great. <laughs> For adding ink to and doing projects, I think we were all talking about. All right, so I'm going to start off with this. And I'm kind of just trying to find an area that I'm going to make the, um, the horizon or the ground line. So I'm going to kind of stick with underneath of him for now. bit of glycerin well, it looks like kind of like a cloudy day I'm gonna go just a little bit at the bottom so there will be the top of him and then if you wanted to the other thing you could do is you could go in with your sponge and with just a little bit concentrated more so on the seaside spray. I'm going to add in just a teeny bit though of um, blueberry bushel because that really is a nice complimentary sky color as well. Let's scoot this up here. Just a little bit though. Kind of helps to frame your picture a little bit. Oh, I think I got a little crazy there. And if you do, if you just notice what I did, if you have a spot that's really, really dark and it's a little too dark for you, if you pick up a little bit of glycerin and then you go back over that spot, it really will soften it out a lot. So it, it really does help to do that. All right, so let me wipe this off once more. Put a little bit more glycerin. And this time I'm going to go with a green. So I'm going to do a little bit of Call Me Clover. And then a little bit, I think, of garden green. So, let's see. This one was for blue. So, I'm going to do Call Me Clover with the sponge. Ooh, I think some of my sponges need to, to hit the uh, recycling bin. Yeah, this one's starting to flake a little bit. That's when you know. You're like, okay, this one has seen its, its day. There's a little bit of that pick that up later with a little bit of tape. I'm going to go to the other side. So a little bit of garden green just to kind of add a slightly different color. And I know these are all ver uh, rather weird looking because the, the animals are all like this crazy shade of blue. But they will all end up looking really cool. So in the meantime, if you're finished with your your glycerin and you're kind of thinking, okay, like you're you're done, you can always take a um a microfiber cloth, and I would just brush away. That way you don't mix the two colors. But I think this is going to end up looking really cute. So there's that one. We only have one more. We're going to do the kangaroo, 
And same thing with the kangaroo. So when we did this earlier, we did a very light reflection. So I'm going to do the same thing. The sponge looks a little better. So let me do a little seaside spray. So I'm going to kind of go across the whole Again, I do kind of try to start a little bit off of the paper. Just that way you don't get any hard streaks. But if you do, just go in, pick up a little bit of glycerin, and it really helps to smooth out the ink. I know it sounds crazy, but it does take a little practice to get used to. And I kind of like the way these little streaks are showing up because it almost looks more a little bit more watery. All right, so there, we'll stick with that. I'm gonna go up a little bit in a light, I'm gonna do pear pizzazz. So I'm gonna kinda do a little bit of the grass, like the, I guess, not really grass, but like the edge of the water area. I'm gonna just dip this a little bit in the glycerin, just to kinda get it a little wet. A little bit in the pear pizzazz, cause I don't want it too, too dark. Very soft is what I'm trying to go for. All right, so there's that. And let's see. Let's go back to a little bit of the mango. I don't know. I think this is my mango sponge. Let's take a peek. Yeah, so we're going to go to our mango. Just kind of dip in this a little bit in the glycerin again. And the mango is pretty, pretty vivid. You can always add more, remember, but you cannot take it away. So if you end up with something where you're like, whoo, what did I do? Just remember that. You can always add more. You can't really take it away. And I'm going to do I'm going to do just a little bit of poppy. It's kind of like a a slightly orange red hue. Mm, let's see. We'll go with this side. Now I'm going to swap back over one more time. I should have just left this open. I'm going to go back to the mango once more and just kind of blend up a little bit. Kind of not looking kind of like a neat rainbow effect. Just to lighten that poppy up just a little bit. So that looks really pretty. I wasn't going for what it ended up being, but that really looks really, really neat. So I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add a little bit more blueberry to the bottom of the water, and then I think we'll be all done. Where was the blueberry here? There we go. Oh, also because I smudged. So do watch your fingers, because if you touch in one thing and then you touch in the other, you can definitely transfer your ink. So I'm going to kind of go over my little smudgy areas. Just to cover them up a little bit. And this end card may end up needing to be trimmed down a little bit. I didn't, honestly didn't measure this one very well. So Okay, that looks pretty good. Except for this little smudge over here. Let's go ahead and cover that up. Alright, so I'm going to leave that be. And I'm going to attempt to to slightly clean off my fingers. Oh, the little bottle for the glycerin. Amy, I got that from Donna. She sent me that. I think she orders them on Amazon. Donna, there you go. Got it online. Used it for henna. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Donna is my uh, my newly downline who is also my <laughs> supplier. Doesn't that make it sound funny? Ha ha ha. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move most of these things out of the way because I think I'm finished with most of them. And what we're going to do, I'm going to do the first one we did. And we're going to try to remove this. So you do want to make sure you let it sit because you want your ink to be dry. But with dye inks, they do dry pretty quickly. So let me see if I can find what I should have gotten out. So a long time ago, Stampin' Up! used to carry this, um, I can't even remember what it's called, like some sort of little eraser thing. But basically what you want to do is very gently, make sure you don't have any yuckies on it if you can help it. Very gently, you kind of want to start pulling pulling on the masking fluid and basically not to sound gross but it kind of comes off kind of looking like a little bit like a boogie <laughs> so Christian would absolutely love this so all you're going to do is erase erase your little thing and look at that and there you can see so you have mask. Now, I don't think, I think on a couple little spaces, I probably didn't color in as good. And this one I did go over a little bit. So you have that. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. So every time you do it, just remember you're going to, you're going to be better and you're going to do a better job next time. So you kind of just pull this and it kind of starts to peel down. So I'll see if I can show you that. So you can see it's very, it's kind of like a rubber bandy. You can see pulls away. So I missed a little spot over here, but it's okay. So you just can continue going. And actually this worked out considering I think I did not do my like a, my a job of prepping. I think it turned out pretty good. So here you have a couple of those meerkats and then you can go back in. And what we'll do is we'll color these meerkats in. As you can see, though, you have this long line of goopy stuff. Here's that. <clears throat> and even though this does take a little bit of prep because you have to know what you're doing ahead of time, it does really give you very good... Um, I think there's one more on there. It gives you really good results. You can see how white and clean everything is there. So there's that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do the turtle. You kind of just pick a spot and start. And then you can see it really starts to pull. You can kind of pull it away, but honestly it's easier to do it with your eraser. Adhesive remover, that's what this thing is called, which does make sense now that you know. You just have all these little balls of stuff you want to pull off of there so you don't goof it up. Let's see. Don't have my glasses on. It looks like it's pretty clean. All right, so there's the turtle. And this is called drawing gum. So it is liquid mask like a masking agent or drawing gum. I believe I got mine, if I'm not mistaken, I think I got it on Amazon. I'm pretty sure I did not get it from Simon Says Stamp. I'm pretty sure I got it from Amazon. And then you do need some sort of an adhesive remover or like a little eraser thingamajiggy. I probably wouldn't want to use this with like my this eraser, my mono eraser, because this I actually use to erase stuff. You definitely want to use it more so with an adhesive remover, unless you have like a really yucky eraser that you don't care about anymore, maybe. Because it does kind of stick to things, Let's make sure. Okay, so there are those. So that's pretty cool. Let's make sure I got all the goopy stuff off of here. Put that in the trash. All right, so now, so there are our three little 
sky. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to color these in. Now I stamped these with Memento. So I'm going to go ahead and do these with the blends just since I have the ability to be able to do it. So I'm going to use Granny Apple Green and Old Olive. I think it's light. No, I wanted light. That's dark. Light Old Olive for the turtle. Um, maybe like a little bit of yellow. What is this? Daffodil. Yeah, Dark Daffodil Delight. For the little um, meerkats, I will go with... I'm going to go with Crumb Cake. And then some Smoky Slate. And then for the kangaroo, I probably will do the same. So I'm going to do these kind of quickly. Not like super fast, but... I'm going to just go through them, not spend too much time. So I'm just going to add a little bit of onto a little bit of um daffodil delight onto his stomach and then we'll go with a little bit of the light old olive kind of to blend it a little bit kind of on the edge there. And then I'm going to go to is this I think I have one cap of each on here. Yeah. Goof that one off. So this is supposed to be light. Let me swap these so I don't I'm going to go with light Granny Apple Green first. And I'm not being too specific. And then I'm just going to go in with the dark and add a little bit of shading. Kind of to the shaded spots where I'm working. And then we'll put these onto a card. So even though this did take, what is it, 10, 15, this is a little bit longer than a normal video, so I do apologize. I know sometimes it can get a little longer. But even though it did take a little bit of time, which we did do some prepping and stuff, I still think it turned out really adorably. I'm going to add a little bit of dark granny apple green down here with the shading areas. Go back in here. Go one more time with the light and just kind of bring it together. I'm going to do my very best attempt. I think I might have to switch to this to keep his eye white. Okay, let me bring in a little dark. back with the light okay and then I'm gonna just do one more thing I usually do this on white spots so this is just light pool, par pool party I just colored in his eye with the light pool party okay so there's that one all right let me do little meerkat so we have light crumb cake I don't want to make them too tan since we have so much tan here on the ground. Probably could have done a little bit darker of a ground, but a little darker over here. Going to just re blend in with the light. Also, if there's any little spots I missed on the ground, just kind of filling those in. And then I'm going to do it with the top of them. I'm just going to add in a little bit of the smoky slate. Try to avoid his mouth if I can help it. And then my little dude over here. Okay. And I'm going to do light smoky slate only because I don't want it to be too. Oh, that one doesn't work. I forgot that end is a little bit goofed. Was used a little too hard in class. A little bit on their poles. Okay. 
I'm just gonna go back in with the smoky slate and add just I'm sorry with the um crumb cake and add just a little shading. Well, I accidentally made his teeth brown. Okay. Now a couple little tiny spots I did miss here with the yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with the light daffodil delight and I'm just gonna kind of fill in the edging because I think when I got a little crazy with my masking because I think I was worried I was running a little late. So I just filled that in just with that teeny, this is probably the biggest spot, these two spots here, but still doesn't look too bad. Looks pretty cute. All right, so lastly, we have our koala, and I'm going to do him first. Oh, I keep forget I have to order a new one of these because this one is not working. I'm going to switch to a different color, dark gray granite. I need a bit of new brush tip on my gray granite. Okay, and crumb cake, that might not be that bad. I'm trying to keep him kind of lighter. I really, I need to order that like as soon as we're done this video. So then we have this and this. I'm going to bring in a little bit of soft suede as well. And I think koalas, if I, when I did look before, they can be multiple colors. Is this dark? Yeah, that's going to be too dark. They can be multiple colors. So I'm going to go right now with a variance of light crumb cake and light soft suede. And same thing again. I kind of did do a little goof here with my masking because I have a little bit of um, orange that's showing through here. So I can always go back and fix that. So this is light soft suede. So I'm going to just bring a little bit of this in. Kind of in the shaded spots. And then back to my light crumb cake. Other thing you can do with these too, if you really are kind of not sure about using your blends, believe it or not, is you can use them mixed in with your watercolor pencils. And I did color a lot of animals before when I did this. I colored them to start with my watercolor pencils. And then I went in and accented the dark and light spots with my blends. And it really made them look super, super cool. Because it gave almost like a fur feeling to, to the way the coloring was. Really looked neat. I'm going to do this more over here. I'm going to go with... I was like, I'm going to do my dark right here. I'm just bringing in just a little bit of dark crumb cake. Just kind of in a couple spots. When you go back, it really does help to blend the two pieces together. Even sometimes if you aren't really necessarily doing them at the same time with your, depending on the colors you choose, really is, I really like these blends. They really color super nice. Okay, so with my little spot right here, you can see there's a white spot. I think this is, so this is Dark Daffodil Delight. So I'm going to just try to blend this in right here. Actually, it matched perfectly. So completely cover that up. I have a little teeny spot on this side, little spot over here. You always want to try to go with a darker, or I should say the lighter color of whatever you may have if you missed a spot, because if you go darker, it's almost so obvious it's not going to look good. Okay, so there are those three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount these really, really simply. I'm going to mount them all onto, um, I think I'm going to do them onto crumb cake because I think it'll look neat, and then I'll put them onto a black base. So move all those markers over. Oh, goodness. My daubers are falling everywhere, but luckily they don't have ink on them. Actually, I might even do, could even do these onto Sahara Sand. Yeah, I'm going to go with Crumb Cake. I think it's going to have more of a striking contrast. So let me grab Crumb Cake. I'm going to grab a couple little pieces. See, that one might be good. This one might be okay for 
something that's just a, like a little bit too tight. Clearly need to get some more chrome key. And, and finally we'll mount these onto black. So we have three. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and score my bases. So I'm going to just score these at four and a quarter. Cut them. So there's two. You just need one more. They're in your supplies, Tina. Oh my gosh, Tina, by the way, I was watching your bubble um, video the other day. Yesterday, as a matter of fact. That is some cool stuff. Who would have ever thought bubbles? It's kind of like me when I said that about with the uh, filling in to make the silhouettes. What a great idea. All right, so let me see what this is. This is four by five and a quarter. Okay, so we have five and a half by four and a quarter. So this one's going to end up having no, um, it's just going to be crumb cake onto black. So you could trim this down a little bit. And honestly, I might go just a smidge, but let's see, this one is, let's, I'm going to trim just a little bit off here. So that was, I'm going to go with three and a quarter. And what are we measuring? Three and a quarter by four. Okay. Let's see. This one is four and a quarter. Three and a half. That might be okay. That one looks good. All right, last one is the turtle. Turtle is about four and a quarter by three. Four and a half by three and a quarter. And some of these do <laughs> have score lines in them, but in the essence of attempting to be slightly speedy, I'm foregoing the fact that some of them aren't perfectly neat. So I'm going to just put this down. Now, you definitely want to do one of two things. You don't want to use snail because you have worked on these papers a lot. So you either need to use um, Tombow or or fast fuse or tear and tape, something that's going to give them stability because they have been worked a lot and that is going to make it a little bit hard. So we'll go with here. Put him on. Oh, this even looks like a picture. That's pretty cool. And instead of doing like dimensionals or anything, I'm just going to put these straight down. Again, for the main reason being is that these had a lot of working done to them with the colors. I'm going to lay that there. Obviously, you're going to need to put a white panel, but that's pretty cool. Same with the meerkats. And my apologies and thank you to all of you. Meerkats are not Australian. They are in fact African. We have them in um, <laughs> the Hershey Park um, Zoo America, which is like a kind of a, um, a zoo where they save or they have rescued animals. They had them there. Probably should have seen it there that they were African. <laughs> But next time I'll pay a little bit more attention to my animal location. So those, these all really turned out cute. I really like the colors that I did. I'm very proud of myself. Did a good job. And what I will do is the two other cards that we made, I will go back and I will finish them once they're dry. But I'm going to do those as watercolors, okay? Okay. So this one is going to just have onto a black base. So you probably could do any other base because this is going to match exactly. So you could do it whichever way you like, but you could trim it down a little bit. I just kind of started out with a big paper. Now, what I'm going to do with this, and I'm going to show you this only because it's a full-size paper. Whenever I have, this is just another quick tip, whenever I have something that I'm mounting and I want it to be strong, but I want to be able to maybe adjust it a little bit. I usually put, I usually put a little bit of 
liquid glue. Oh, come on. I should have grabbed the other one. I usually put a little bit of liquid glue on top of my Tombow because it will help you to be able to line it up better and move it just a teeny bit if you need to. So usually what I'll do is I'll pick up the card, kind of sit the two of them together, and then line it up. And then worst case scenario, if I needed to adjust it, I could have, but it just gives you that little wiggle glue with the Tombow back there. But at the same time, there you go. Nice card. So a couple nice cards. I really think the framing of these, and especially on the black, really, really makes them pop. It's stuck all the way back there. It really makes them pop nicely. So this is the one we did the other day. Again, this one we did with masking paper. And then these three we did with the drawing gum, which is a masking fluid. Remember, you do need to have a, um, a paintbrush. It needs to have some dish soap on the end of it that makes it easier to clean up. You need to have, where is it? The adhesive remover to be able to get it off of there when you're finished with it, which is super duper helpful. Um, otherwise than that, one other thing that's probably important with your colors are, make sure when you do your colors, if you're sponging or whatever the case may be, if you don't already have, glycerin does come in a humongous bottle. As a matter of fact, I got mine on Amazon. This is bigger. I probably will never use this in a whole lifetime, but it's, there's probably smaller ones. But I usually will just put this into what Donna sent me with this little one because I think everybody got nervous watching me pour it on screen. <laughs> but glycerin helps to spread your inks a little bit better. If you don't do something great the first time, remember, it's just your first time. Just try it again. Also, you could add great sentiments to these. However, these pictures are so nice, I'm almost hesitant to add something to them. I think if I did, I would do just like this one, like something really small that's not going to kind of take away from the picture. But I think they turned out so amazing. I am so proud of myself. <laughs> I think they turned out really, really good. So if you think you'd like to try this too, remember, everybody does something once the first time. So just give it a shot. Worst case scenario doesn't turn out. It's only paper. You can do one over again. Lots of fun stamp sets. And again, I will come back with these. So these are the two that we did at the beginning. And I did, again, I did these on, um, these are probably almost dry. I did these on watercolor paper. So instead of what I did before, I will do a whole video on this, but it'll be a pre-recorded video. And I'm probably going to wet the background, add in the color, and then we'll do this. And then we're going to have to let this dry. So this is going to be something that has to dry because when you watercolor, and then the, you're going to remove this. You totally have to wait for the stuff to be dry before you can do it. So I probably will end up doing this as a longer video with letting it dry and possibly hitting the heat tool on one of them. But stay tuned for that. So if you're not a subscriber on my YouTube channel, might be worthwhile to follow me there and turn on the bell while you're there. Um, I appreciate all the comments, the shares, the hearts, the love, everything you all have to share. Thank you so very much for stopping by and watching today. I hope you learned something new. And as always, I can't do this without your support. So if you have anything you'd like to buy, I'd be happy to have you shop in my online store, which is reachthestamper.stampinup.net. Until next time, I go hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again for watching.